In this video, I want to tell you how you can calculate valence electrons, but also to understand it as well. So let's look at an atom of nitrogen. So nitrogen has an atomic number of 7 and an average atomic mass of 14.01. So an atom of nitrogen has 7 protons and 7 electrons. Atoms are electrically neutral. Now let's draw a simple Bohr model of the nitrogen atom. In the first shell, or the first energy level, nitrogen carries two electrons. That's the maximum number of electrons you can have in the first energy level. In the second energy level, you could have up to eight electrons. But what we have is a total of seven. So we need to place five in the second energy level. So we could have a total of seven. The valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. So therefore, nitrogen has five valence electrons. So here are the five valence electrons of the nitrogen atom. Now, the inner shell electrons, the ones on the inside, the ones that are not valence electrons, these are known as core electrons. So nitrogen contains two core electrons for a total of seven electrons, which is, which goes with the atomic number of nitrogen. Now keep in mind, for atoms, the number of protons and electrons are the same, but for ions, they differ. So you have to adjust it based on the charge. Now let's look at another example. Let's consider the aluminum atom, which has an atomic number of 13 and an average atomic mass of 26.98. How many valence electrons and core electrons can be found in the aluminum atom? So let's draw a picture. So this is going to be the first shell, and this is the second energy level, and this one is going to be the third. So in the first energy level, there's going to be two electrons. Now we said the second can hold a maximum of eight electrons. So right now we have a total of 10, but we need to get up to 13. So that's 13. So aluminum has three valence electrons. Those are the electrons in the highest energy level. Now how many core electrons does it have? It has two in the first shell, and then eight in the second shell. So it has a total of 10 core electrons. If you add 10 plus 3, you're going to get the atomic number for the atom, 13 electrons in total. So just make sure you understand this. The valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost energy level. These are the electrons that participate in a chemical reaction. The inner core electrons, for the most part, rarely participate in a chemical reaction. It's the valence electrons that are involved and reactions that we see in a day-to-day -day basis. Now, another way in which you can identify the number of valence electrons is by writing the electron configuration. So let's write it for nitrogen and for aluminum. The electron configuration for nitrogen, I'm assuming that you already know how to do this. If not, you could check out another video that I have on YouTube. It's a 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So notice that the exponents add up to 7, because nitrogen has a total of 7 electrons. Now, in the highest energy level, that's in the second energy level, we have two sublevels, 2s and 2p. But in the second energy level, notice that we have a total of 5 electrons. So those 5 are the 5 valence electrons. Those are the electrons in the outermost or the highest energy level. All the other electrons are known as core electrons. So you can see that nitrogen has two core electrons. Now let's consider aluminum. The electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. The s sublevel can only hold two electrons. p can hold up to six electrons, and d can hold up to 10. But if we look at the highest energy level of aluminum, which is the third energy level, 
we could see that there are three electrons there. Two plus one is three. So aluminum contains three valence electrons. All the others represent core electrons. So we got two plus two plus six. So aluminum contains 10 core electrons. So that's how you can identify the number of valence electrons and core electrons using the electron configuration. Now let me give you another example. Let's use chlorine, which has an atomic number of 17. So in an atom of chlorine, write the electron configuration and then identify the number of core and valence electrons. So the electron configuration of chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. All the exponents add up to 17. So the valence electrons are the electrons in the highest energy level. So in the case of chlorine, we have 2 plus 5, so 7 valence electrons. And the rest are core electrons. So we got a total of 10 core electrons. Another way in which you can identify the number of valence electrons is using the periodic table. You can identify it based on the group number of representative elements. So in group number one, we have elements like hydrogen, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium. These elements all have a valence electron of one. They have one valence electron. Now, in the second group, you have the alkaline earth metals like beryllium, magnesium, calcium. So these metals have two valence electrons. They're in group two of the periodic table. Now we're going to skip the transition metals and move on to group 13, also known as group 3A. So these include aluminum, gallium, and I believe indium is the next one. So these elements have three valence electrons. And I'm forgetting something. Can't forget about boron. After boron is aluminum, then we have uh, gallium. So these elements contain three valence electrons. And then after boron, you have carbon, silicon, germanium. Those elements contain four valence electrons. And then you have nitrogen, phosphorus, and I believe arsenic. So these, they're found in group 5A, so they contain five valence electrons. And then you have the calcogens like oxygen, sulfur, selenium. These guys, they hold up to six valence electrons. And then you have the halogens like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Those guys, they have seven. Now be careful with this one. Helium is a noble gas, but it only has two valence electrons because it, it has a total of two electrons. So it can't have eight. But the other ones after it, like neon, and I think it's uh, argon, krypton, all of these, they have eight valence electrons. Now I have another question for you. Let's focus on iodine, which has an atomic number of 53 and an average atomic mass of 126.9. Now, how many core electrons are found in an atom of iodine? Think about it. Now, you can use any one of the techniques that we've illustrated in this video. You can draw the Bohr model of the atom, which is going to take time to draw 53 electrons. You can also write out the electron configuration, which works as well. But because iodine is a relatively large atom, it's going to take some time to draw the electron configuration. So is there an efficient way to determine the number of core electrons? What's the easiest way to quickly get the answer? Now we can start with an equation. The total number of electrons is equal to the sum of the core electrons plus 
the valence electrons. Keep that in mind. Now, for an atom of iodine, we have 53 electrons in total. Now, in order to find the core electrons, we need to find the valence electrons first. And we could do so by using the group number. Iodine is in group 7A. It's a halogen. So it contains 7 valence electrons. So the number of core electrons is simply the total number of electrons, which you can find it based on the atomic number of an atom, minus the valence electrons found by the group number. So it's going to be 53 minus 7, which is 46 core electrons. Because 46 plus 7 is 53. And so that's an efficient way to find the number of core electrons when you're dealing with an element that's pretty large. You don't want to draw it out or write out the electric configuration. That's going to take time. So just identify the atomic number and the group number, subtract those two, and that will give you the number of core electrons.